In this tutorial in CyberLink PowerDirector, we're going to learn about anchor points. What are they and how can you use them when you have an object, a title, or even a video in motion in your project? What is an anchor point? It's basically the point where the movement is focused on. And the default anchor point for anything is in the center. So when I play this first segment of this object moving on the screen, I have it expanding. And you notice it's going to expand where the arrow is. It's going to expand from the center of the object. And it does. That is the default. Now let's double click on this object and get into the PIP Designer. Now that I'm in the PIP Designer, I see this little green thumbtack. That's the anchor point. Now you may not see it unless you turn this object on that says Anchor Point Display Anchor Point. And there it is. It's still there. It's still working. I just don't see my little thumbtack icon. Now the default of the center of every object is 0.5 on X and 0.5 on the Y coordinate. You can change that anywhere you want. We'll show you more about that. But let me turn it on and to move it, the easiest way is to use the mouse. You hover over it until you see a smaller thumbtack to the right of the, the arrowhead. I'm going to move it to the upper left corner. And notice now you see the X and Y coordinates 0, 0. And if we move it all the way down to the opposite corner, the X and Y coordinates are 1, 1. Now the anchor point must be on or on the edge of an object. I can put it anywhere between these if I want. I could put it here if I desired, but I cannot put it outside of that object, that title, or that video clip. So it's confined to the element that it modifies. So that's a little bit about how anchor points work. So everything starts with the center, but sometimes you don't want it to look that way. Let's cancel that and look at my second example here. When I play this, you're going to see an expansion. And it'll expand just like before, but notice the anchor point is the lower left corner. And so if we look at how we did that, and you notice my anchor point is set down here. So if I go to my anchor point values, if I move back to the very first frame, my anchor point is set down here, and the expansion is geared toward the lower left corner of this particular graphic image. So that controls how that works. Let's cancel out of that. Let's look at another example here. And if we look at this one, it expands. We have the same keyframes for expansion, magnification, but the anchor point I set in the middle at the bottom. So that controls how the whole thing swells up. Let's look at another example. Okay, here I have an anchor point in the upper right corner. And when I expand it, again, now it expands from there. So you have this fine tuning in motion on the objects. Let's look at another one. We'll play this one here. Now this is different. Okay, here we have a rotation of 360 degrees. And it's rotating as it is in default around the center. Let's double click and look at it. Now that I'm in the PIP Designer and I look at my anchor point, the anchor point is at the default in the center. So when it rotates from frame 1 to the frame here at 3 seconds, it's going to spin around the center of the object. That's the default. Let's look at another ob object I have where I move the anchor point and we still have rotation. Let's play this here. And now we have rotation but it rotates differently because the anchor point is in the upper right corner. Look again at the parameters so you can see how they're set. We move down to our anchor point, and we notice the anchor point is at the upper right corner. The rotation value here happens to be in the first frame. Our rotation value is 180, and then at, when we get to the last keyframe, rotation is 0. So we have a 180 degree rotation around the upper right corner of our object. I'll give you a couple other examples with objects. Now this is different. In this one we're going to see the, the object slide to the right. And most of you may think, oh I know how he did that. He used position keyframes. No I didn't. 
Let's watch what happens. I'm going to double click on this. And when we're looking at this one, I have no position keyframes if you look very carefully. What did I do? I have anchor point keyframes. So when we go to the first frame, the anchor point is set at the upper right. Then when I move a little bit to the next anchor point, that's still at the upper right. I wanted to freeze it. But when I go to the last one, you notice the anchor point is at the upper left. And so I can make modifications on an object without using a position keyframe, but using anchor point keyframes because it says I want the point where this is on my background to be here where it starts at the upper right and then moves to the upper left. But to do that, it's going to have to move the object to obey the values of the anchor point in the keyframes. We'll show you a more complicated one in a moment. Let's look at this one here. We look at this one and play this. There we're going to the upper right, then it's going to move to the left. And this was all done not with position keyframes, but with anchor point keyframes. So when we get into this one and look at how it's set up here, we know as we slide down to the anchor point, the first frame is in the upper right. We move to the next one. Next one, it's in the lower left. So that forces the, the, it to slide up at a 45 degree angle in order to obey the anchor point. And then the last one, if we move to the last keyframe, it's in the middle. So it had to move left so that the anchor point controlled the object again. Now you can use anchor points not only on objects like this one, you can use it when you're working with multiple videos. Let's see what this one looks like. Here I'm doing what looks like a slide transition, but I didn't use any slide transition at all. When I click on the object, we're going to see that I used an anchor point. I'm going to minimize it. We move to the beginning, and the anchor point for this particular video clip is at the upper right. But then when I move to the right, it's on the upper left. And so to obey the anchor point, I wind up sliding the object from left to right, just like we did the object before. In this case, we're working with a video. Here's another interesting way you can do that with a video. And here we're rotating it in. And you can guess by now we're rotating it because the anchor point is in the upper right corner. Here's a slightly more complicated example. And here we have it rotating, moving, and changing scale all at once. Let's see how we did this. I'll double click on this, getting into the PIP Designer. Now we here we have position keyframes change. We have scale keyframes change. We have videos on all of those other keyframes. We have rotations change, but notice we also have anchor points change. So when I go back to the first frame of, of this particular clip, my anchor point is in the upper right corner because it's going to rotate. When I get to the last keyframe, it's in the upper left corner. So we've used all these different tools in keyframing to modify the motion of this particular video on top of the video beneath it. It can be a little complicated when you think of all of it at once, but I'd encourage you to experiment with it. You can do some fine, fine tuning by modifying the anchor points in titles, the anchor points in videos, and the anchor points in objects when you want some motion of any of them on the screen in CyberLink PowerDirector.